This presentation will give you guidelines on how to model a double pipe heat exchanger where there is no phase change in either fluid going into the heat exchanger. Let's take a look at a generic heat exchanger that is of the double pipe variety. We have a tube running through a outer tube. The inside tube has an inside diameter D sub I, has an outside diameter D sub zero, and the shell will have a diameter of D sub S. We have liquid flowing into the shell and out and we also have liquid flowing inside the tube and leaving. If the tube side fluid and the shell side fluid enter at the same location, we call that a co-current heat exchanger. If they enter at opposite ends, then it's a counter-current heat exchanger. But the equations we're going to present for this modeling will take care of all that irrespective of what type of heat exchanger you will have. Let's look at some of the equations that govern heat transfer in a heat exchanger. Our first is looking at the heat transfer based on an overall heat transfer coefficient, the effective surface area of heat transfer, and a temperature driving force. In this case, we can look at a heat transfer coefficient based on the outside heat transfer area of the tube u sub zero. The A zero is the surface area of the outside of the tube and delta T log mean is the temperature driving force. Or our heat transfer can be modeled using the inside heat transfer coefficient of the tube, the inside surface area of the tube, and the same delta T log mean driving force. An energy balance on both fluids shows us that the Heat transfer is also equal to the mass flow rate going inside the tube times the heat capacity of the fluid in the tube times the change in temperature of the tube fluid. And that should equal also the mass flow rate of the shell fluid, heat capacity of the shell fluid, and the temperature change of the shell fluid. Surface areas will be based on, for outside surface area, based on the outside diameter of the tube, D sub zero and we'll take the circumference of that times the length of the tube. We can also look at the inside surface area of the tube using the inside diameter and the length of the tube. Units are quite important for our energy transfer. It should be in units of watts. Our heat transfer coefficients are in watts per square meter degree Kelvin and our temperature log delta T log mean should be in units of Kelvin as well. Our length dimensions and diameters in L should all be in meters. Areas should be in square meters. Mass flow rates should be in kilograms per second and heat capacities in joules per kilogram degree K. And our change in tube and shell temperatures should also be in Kelvin. Looking at the delta T tube, we will use an absolute value of the temperature difference between the inlet and outlet of the tube. And the shell will also be similar, the inlet and outlet. And by using the absolute values, it doesn't matter whether it is from the co-current or counter-current variety. Our delta T log mean is given by this equation where we would have delta T1 minus delta T2 divided by the logarithm of delta T1 over delta T2. Here it's important to note that delta T1 is the temperature difference between the tube and the shell on the left hand side of the heat exchanger and delta T2 is the difference between the tube and the shell on the right hand side of the heat exchanger. Let's take a look at how we will calculate heat transfer coefficient for this shell and tube heat exchanger. The governing equation for overall heat transfer coefficient is actually the inverse of the heat transfer coefficient. We'll be basing everything on the sum of the resistance to heat transfer. If you look on the outside surface area of the tube, 
our overall heat transfer resistance, which is 1 over U sub 0, is 1 divided by the film heat transfer coefficient on the outside of the tube, plus the resistance of heat transfer based on the tube material itself, and that will be equivalent to the thickness of the material, which is the R0 minus RI, or outside radius minus inside radius, the area of heat transfer, A sub 0, divided by the thermal conductivity of the tube material, K sub A, and a log mean area, A sub A log mean. And then we also have a resistance to heat transfer on the inside of the tube, and that will be equal to the outside surface area, A0, divided by the inside surface area, A sub I, and the film heat transfer coefficient, H sub I. We can construct the same formula if we want to base our heat transfer coefficient based on the inside surface area of the tube, and it's given by the relationship there. The log mean area is just the difference between the outside and inside surface area of the tube, A0 minus AI, divided by the logarithm of A0 over AI. Many studies have been done with water, and so we have some uh, easy relationships in calculating film heat transfer coefficients, either on inside or the outside of the tube. For instance, the film heat transfer coefficient is given to us by 1429 times the quantity 1 plus 0.0146 times the average temperature and that quantity will be multiplied by the velocity raised to the 0 0.8 power divided by an equivalent diameter raised to the 0 0.2 power. This is very unit specific and so your units must be for the heat transfer coefficient watts per square meter Kelvin, the radii must be in units of meters and thermal conductivity in watts per meter degree Kelvin. Velocity must be in meters per second equivalent diameter in meters, and average temperature in degrees Celsius. Our radii are given by the equation above, where it's just the outside radius is the outside diameter over 2, and the same for the inside radius will be the inside diameter over 2. The surface area for heat transfer on the outside of the tube is pi times d0 times L inside diameter or inside area is pi times d sub i times L and the average tube temperature would be the temperature of the tube fluid at the inlet plus the tube fluid at the outlet divided by 2 and the average shell fluid is the temperature of the shell fluid at the inlet plus the temperature of the shell fluid at the outlet divided by 2 when we want to calculate the velocity in the shell velocity, it's the volumetric flow rate of the shell fluid divided by the cross-sectional area of the shell. And for the tube fluid, it's the volumetric flow, flow rate of the tube fluid divided by the cross-sectional area of the tube. The shell cross-sectional area is equal to pi over 4 times the difference between the shell inside diameter and the tube outside diameter squared and the cross-sectional area of the tube is just pi times d sub i squared over 4. Our equivalent shell uh, diameter is the outside or the inside diameter of the shell d sub s minus d sub 0 which is the outside diameter of the tube and the equivalent diameter of the tube is just d sub i. Units for the volumetric flow rate of tube and shell fluid must be in cubic meters per second, and the diameters all must be in meters. We're now going to take a look at an example where we have a double pipe heat exchanger and in the tube we're going to have hot water its flow rate is going to range from 0 0.5 to 1.5 gallons per minute 
The inlet temperature of the hot water will be 65 degrees Celsius. The shell fluid will be cold water. Its flow range will be from 1 to 5 gallons per minute and the inlet temperature of that cold fluid will be 8 degrees Celsius. The dimensions of the tubes are going to be uh, the inside diameter of the shell will be one inch. The outside diameter of the tube will be a half an inch. And the inside diameter of the tube will be 0 0.4 inches. And the total length of the heat transfer uh, material will be three feet.